Hello everyone. In this introduction to Unity video, we are going to be taking a look at cameras. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now on with the show. So almost everybody to some degree will use a camera within Unity at some point. Not all projects would necessarily require a camera, but everything you want to be seen in the game view would need a camera one way or another. So by default, Unity will always add a camera whenever you create a new scene and you can treat it much in the same way as you would with an object. So you can move it around, you can rotate it, you can do pretty much all the standard stuff in a transform. What we are after here is all of these settings right here. Now, as this is an introduction, I'll be going through uh, pre pretty much everything here. Um, but there are some things that you may not necessarily need or want to use um, just because from an introduction perspective, there is no point to some of these. However, if you want to go further, you can play around quite easily and not break anything. So obviously everything the camera sees is rendered in the game view. So let's press play and we'll stay in the game view and see what we can do here. Now we'll start at the top. So clear flags, these are some interesting settings. So the two that you'll probably deal with the most are things like the skybox and solid color. So obviously by default, the skybox is here. We can see it nice here, the default one. Obviously any skybox you have will be rendered if we have that set. However, if we set it to solid color, we can pretty much eliminate anything there. So it's just that solid color that we can see. And there are some other ones that we can select, but realistically, there's no point especially at um, an entry level, I would stick with either the skybox or the solid color. Again, depending what you're trying to create, the aesthetic of the game, I would stick with one of these two. Culling mask is a way of being able to pretty much, you could think of it as getting rid of everything if we were to set nothing. So what's happening here is this is all based off layers. So if we were to set all of these as the default layer, which indeed they are, and turn the default layer on, we would see them. So what's happening is every object has a layer that you set up here. And we can see that the culling mask is able to have these specific layers on. So if we were to set everything, we would indeed see everything under whatever layer you're set as. So if we want to have everything except default, you'd be able to untick it. And obviously this applies to any layers you add further into the game. So it's a cool way of being able to control what the camera can and can't see. Now projection, this one is very interesting depending on what you're trying to create here. For a 3D environment, perspective is usually the best. However, you can change it to orthographic. And what this does is it gives a kind of 2D look. So if you've created uh, a game in 3D and you want to randomly give it a 2D aesthetic, you could use that orthographic setting. In scene view, we can still see it is indeed still 3D. Now, one thing to be mindful of here is that the rotation will play a large part of this. So if we were to rotate on the Y, we can see how that looks. It is still rendering it in 3D, however, it's still got that 2D aesthetic. So if we set all the rotation to zero, we can see that it does indeed look two-dimensional there. So like I say, if you're trying to create something to that respect, that's probably a good thing to play around with. And obviously we play around with the size, we can see just how much it does have an impact. So obviously it looks like the camera's zooming out, however, the camera is going absolutely nowhere at all. We can see the rendering path in this white square box. Let's set it back to perspective. And obviously the same kind of imagery for that would be the field of view that we can see right there. So obviously if you've got an ultra widescreen monitor, the field of view might be something that you would want to play around with, but realistically you can just change it. I think the default setting of 60 is relatively decent, but again, depending on what you're aiming for with your game, you may want to change that. Physical camera is not something I've ever particularly found a use for. I don't think there is a massive need for it. Everything I've ever wanted to try and achieve with a camera has been done without the need of setting it as a physical camera. Uh, clipping planes are very interesting. Now, we can see this here, no problem, and that's good. But if we had objects way off in the distance, we wouldn't be able to see it with our far setting set as one 
thousand. If we set that to ten thousand, we would probably then be able to see them. And again, if we set it back to a thousand, we wouldn't be able to see. So clipping planes are a way of rendering everything that the camera can see up to a certain distance. So if we were to set this as 10, we would not really be able to see much. We can see that the clipping plane goes to there. So the camera is only rendering up to that point there. Everything obviously still exists after there. It's just the camera cannot see it. So if we move our camera along, you can see it rendering as the camera is moving along. And once again, if we were to change the clipping plane there we can see just how much the camera can render so if the camera is set there at say five something it's only rendering just in front of it and we can see it does actually render it just can't be seen because of those clipping planes generally i think having it set as a thousand the default setting is relatively decent it depends what you're trying to create what you're aiming for here uh, you may want to increase it or decrease it now the viewport rect is a way of, you could think of it as a way of creating split screen or, you know, certain areas that the camera will be focused on. Um, again, from an introduction standpoint, I don't think there's too much to worry about when it comes to viewport rect. If you're looking to create one way of split screen, you could use it. Um, there are obviously many different ways of creating um, a split screen in Unity. That's just one of them. So if you do want to have a play around with them and see how they affect your game, obviously you can do. Uh, don't worry about breaking anything. You can always reset the component. Now, all of these settings here, I'm not going to go in order. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump back and forth because I kind of feel that these are somewhat interconnected and they're mainly to do with how your camera renders and how it looks. So, for example, if you are using um, some post-processing, you'd want to turn multi-sample anti-aliasing off rather than use the graphics settings. And you probably want to use the rendering path as deferred. Now, one thing to note with that is if you are using something like a deferred rendering path, it does mean that there's going to be more strain on the machine itself, whereas something like forward or the graphic settings is not going to have quite as much strain. But obviously, if you want your game to look top notch, then you are probably better off going for deferred. But there are some drawbacks to this. I'm going to go back a couple of steps and go to projection and change it to orthographic. And you'll see that we are not able to have an orthographic camera set as deferred for the rendering path. We need to use forward or graphic settings. Reason being is that it's just one of these things that it, it's not, you could think of it in its simplest terms as not being compatible because Unity isn't able to actually do it that way, if you think of it like that. So just be mindful of a couple of things here. And obviously HDR, you can set it uh, on and off. You can allow dynamic resolution. This is all to do with how it looks. And this is going much more in depth with how a camera functions. And obviously I do think it's worth you yourself without the need for me playing around with some of these settings and exploring what they can do. Another interesting setting that we can use is this target texture here. Now a target texture is a way of allowing the camera to render whatever it sees onto a texture. And something like that is very useful when it comes to, let's say, creating a minimap. So if you're creating a minimap and you want to have a flat look rather than a 3D look from the perspective, you could have your projection set as orthographic, rendering path as forward or graphic settings, and then set a texture on here for the camera to render to, and then apply that to a UI image and you'd have a minimap. So the camera is a very very useful tool. There is absolutely so much you can do just with these couple of settings in a camera and I do recommend playing around with them. So guys if you've got any top tips uh, for using camera or you want to add anything that I've said here, if you've got any little tips or tricks or anything really cool about cameras, let me know in the comments because you'll be helping other people out as well. And if you do want to know any more, also leave a comment. There are plenty of people here that know so much about Unity and how, like I say, it's a great community and there's so much to learn. As I said earlier guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload and hopefully I will see you around in another video. Thanks very much for watching.